For part two of our lesson, line of evidence that support plate movement. Last time, we discussed the continental drift theory proposed by Alfred Wegener. We also discussed the different evidence that support the theory of continental drift. But many scientists that time did not believe his theory because Alfred Wegener failed to explain or give a concrete evidence on how the plates move. Today, we will discuss the seafloor spreading, the theory, and how it helps to prove the continental drift. Many people in the past believe that ocean floor is flat like the desert but in 1930s where sounding gear sold sonar or the sound navigation ranging was developed it leads to the discovery of the standing features of the ocean floor sonar is a device that uses sound wave to detect objects so how does a sonar device work a sonar device sends pulses of sound wave down through the water. When these pulses hit objects like fish, vegetation, or the bottom, they are reflected back to the surface. The sonar device measures how long it takes for the sound wave to travel down, hit an object, and then bounce back. It's the same echolocation system bats and dolphins use this information enables the device to judge the depth of an object it also measures the strength of the returning pulse the harder the objects the stronger the return pulse gamit itong sonar malalaman kung ano-ano ang makikita sa ilalim ng karagatan at kung ano or kung gaano ito kalalim. These are the discoveries using sonar. Nakita ng mga scientists na hindi lamang basta flat ang ocean floor o ang ilalim ng karagatan. Ito ay merong iba't ibang features na makikita sa ilalim tulad ng reef valley, trench, at mid-ocean ridge. Ito ay makikita sa kalagitnaan ng Atlantic Ocean. One of the scientists who studied the Mid-Atlantic Ocean Ridge and used sonar during World War II was Harry Hammond Hess, a professor of geology at Princeton University in USA. Harry and his team carefully examined maps of the Mid-Ocean Ridge system. Hess began to think about the ocean floor in relation to the problem of continental drift theory that leads him to the idea of seafloor spreading. Seafloor spreading is the process where new oceanic crust is formed a mid-ocean ridge and slowly pushes the old crust toward the subduction zone. Ito daw ay isang proseso na kung saan yung mga bagong oceanic crust na nabubuo sa mid-ocean ridge ay unti-unti itinutulak yung mga old crust papunta sa subduction zone. According to this theory, hot, less dense material below the Earth's crust rises towards the mid-ocean ridge. This material flows sideways, carrying the seafloor away the ridge, and creates a crack in the crust. The magma flows out of the crack, cools down, and becomes the new seafloor. Over time, the new oceanic crust pushes the old oceanic crust fra far from the ridge and subducted. Ito ay nangyayari sa divergent boundary na kung saan naghihiwalay ang mga plates at gaya ng napag-aralan natin nung nakaraan, ang mainit na materials na nanggagaling sa mantel ay nagmumove upward, pushing the old crust to subduction zone at yung mga molten materials na nagmove sa taas, 
dahil nag-decrease or bumaba na ang temperature, magsisimula na silang mag-solidify o tumigas. At ito na yung magiging new crust. The idea of seafloor spreading is supported by the following evidence. First is the age of rocks. Scientists find out that youngest rocks are found near the ridge, while oldest rocks found far from the ridge. Ibig sabihin, nandito daw kung andito yung ridge, yung mga nasa malapit sa kanya ay younger. Ibig sabihin, ito yung mga bagong crust. At yung malayo, yung mga crust na malayo sa ating ridge, ayun naman daw yung mga older crust. Sila yung nasa subduction zone na. So, na nakita dito yung pagkakaiba-iba ng age ng rocks. So, paano to naging ebidensya na ginamit ng seafloor spreading? Dahil daw, sa pag-move ng magma papunta sa mid-ocean ridge, nakakapag-create ito ng bagong crust. This provides evidence that seafloor spreading and new crust is being created at the ridge. Bakit iba-iba ang age ng rocks? Ang sabi, younger rocks are found near the mid-ocean ridge. Ito ay dahil kung maaalala nyo, habang ang molten materials ay tumatakas or umaangat siya, itinutulak naman ito palayo ang older crust. At yung bagong molten materials na napunta sa itaas ay magsusolidify at magiging bagong crust. Kaya, new crust is being created at the ridge. So, the old crust is pushed and destroyed at the subduction zone. Ano ang mangyayari kapag ka ang older crust ay napunta sa subduction zone? Kapag ka itong older crust napunta sa subduction zone, hinihila ito pababa dahil doon sa slab pool. At kapag ka ito ay nakaabot na doon sa layer ng mantel, which is mataas ulit ang temperature, ang mangyayari doon sa old crust ay magme-melt na yung mga rocks or matutunaw na yung mga bato dahil sa mataas na temperature. Kaya sinabing destruction at the subduction zone. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng construction or formation ng new crust sa mid-ocean ridge at nagkakaroon naman tayo ng destruction or nade-destroyed naman itong mga old crust sa subduction zone. Remember, the formation of new crust at the mid-ocean ridge is not always as fast as the, as the destruction of old crust at the subduction zone. Sabay na nangyayari ang seafloor spreading at destruction. The formation of new crust at the mid-ocean ridge is not always as fast as the destruction. Okay, ibig sabihin, sabay silang nangyayari, sabay nangyayari yung process ng formation o nung seafloor spreading sa kayong destruction sa subduction zone. Sabay nangyayari ang process pero hindi magkasing bilis. Ulitin natin, sabay yung process, sabay yung formation, nagkakaroon ng seafloor spreading dito, nagkakaroon naman ng destruction doon sa subduction zone pero hindi magkasing bilis ng process. So, if the seafloor spreading is faster than subduction, the ocean gets wider. Kapag ka daw yung seafloor, ibig sabihin, kapag mas mabilis ang seafloor spreading o yung pagpo-form ng mid-ocean ridge, mas nagiging malawak ang karagatan. Pero, kapag ka naman, mas mabilis ang destruction at the subduction zone than the seafloor spreading, mas nagiging smaller daw yung ocean. Ito ang nangyayari sa Pacific Ocean at Atlantic Ocean. Subduction is faster than seafloor spreading. The ocean gets smaller. Ibig sabihin, mas mabilis ang destruction sa subduction zone. 
kaysa sa formation ng new crust. Sa Atlantic Ocean naman, it is getting wider. Ibig sabihin, mas mabilis ang formation ng new crust compared to the destruction of older crust at the subduction zone. Another strong evidence that support the seafloor spreading is the magnetic reversal. Magnetic reversal is also called as magnetic cliff of the Earth. Ito ay ang pagbabago ng magnetic pole ng Earth. Ang Earth daw ay isang malaking magnet. It has North Magnetic Pole and South Magnetic Pole. Ang North Magnetic Pole ay makikita sa South Pole o doon sa Antarctica. At ang South Magnetic Pole naman ay makikita sa North Pole o doon sa bandang itaas. Today, this is the orientation of the magnetic poles ng Earth. Pero, pag sinabi nating reversal, magnetic north pole becomes the magnetic south pole of the Earth. Ibig sabihin, pagkalipas ng ilang milyong taon, nagbabago na naman ito or magbabago na naman ito. Kung saan, ang north magnetic pole ay mapupunta naman sa taas at ang south magnetic pole ay mapupunta naman sa ilalim. This change in polarity of the magnet of the magnet is called magnetic reversal. Bago ang magnetic pole ng Earth, bakit nagbabago? It is because of the change in direction of the flow of materials in the outer core. As the magma becomes the new crust, the rocks solidify and follow the magnetic poles of the Earth at that time. Sa panahon ng paglabas ng magma sa mid-ocean ridge, yung magma ay magsosolidify or titigas. At ang mga materials na iyon ay mag-a-align according sa magnetic pole ng Earth. Dahil sa pagbabago ng magnetic pole na kung minsan ang north ay nasa baba, minsan naman ang south ang nasa taas, at paglipas ng panahon, nag-iiba na naman ito. This will form patterns on both sides of the mid-ocean ridge. This pattern is a proof that mid-ocean ridges is moving and that seafloor spreading is really happening. So, paano ito nakatulong sa continental drift theory? So, seafloor spreading shows that the ocean are active site of plate activity. It, only, it also shows that new crust is formed at the mid-ocean ridge and old crust is destroyed at the subduction zone. Seafloor spreading also explains how the plates move due to the convection current in the mantle. Dahil dito napatunayan ng seafloor spreading na totoo ang continental drift theory.